Hello and welcome to Technically Speaking on this lovely Friday morning. When I was prepping for today's topic, I did a quick Google search about the benefits of answering questions, learning through answering questions, other similar phrases, and everything that Google returned was about asking questions, not what I was looking for. So we've stumbled upon our first topic that others are not talking about yet. So as we go through this, this is 100% my opinion, my experiences without the lens of industry to influence it, which is kind of cool to be the first, right? And when I think about how I've learned throughout my life from elementary school, even younger, I definitely learned things by asking questions. I was definitely the kid that asked why too many times and listening to teachers or professors helped. I did my homework, but I've always learned the most by teaching someone what I know. When I would study for tests in college with my roommate who happened to be the same major, I would have her ask me questions so I could answer. It was the best way for me to see the gaps in my knowledge to confirm I knew what I thought I did and not get tripped up and get feedback on what else should I look at. It worked better for me than doing practice problems and worksheets over and over and rereading notes or writing out study guides. But college was a while ago. No one's formally testing my knowledge. Nobody's giving me a grade. So how do I find the gaps in my knowledge, confirm my mastery of a topic as consistently evolving as Uncork? Um, Early in my time at Uncork, one of my colleagues and I would joke that I would come over to her with a problem, and if she had her headphones on, by the time she knew that I was there asking her a question, I had solved my problem just by talking it out. I needed someone to bounce my idea off of and see where I needed to look for more information to complete my knowledge, even if that person wasn't listening to me. As we grew as a company, we built out a community platform and I asked and answered questions pretty consistently. Some of them helped me confirm my knowledge. Others allowed me to think about use cases I hadn't. But most of all, it allowed me to share what I learned in my tenure at Uncork, let other people learn much more quickly than I had. And while I love a little bit of competition, it wasn't about the points or becoming an SME, it was about finding a way to share my knowledge, to learn through teaching, and to explore interesting use cases it might have taken me years to come across on my own. While my introduction and thoughts on learning are interesting, I want to bring in one of our experts on community. Um, welcoming back, Danny, um, to have a conversation about how community and asking and answering questions helps all of us learn and what it does for Uncork on the whole. So first question, how does community fit into becoming an expert in building Uncork? Well, thanks for having me back, Dara. I'm uh, happy to be here. And um, it was great celebrating community stats and uh, talking about what a great year we had just a couple um, uh, months ago. But I'm really excited about this topic because for me, this is what you know community is all about in our community program and our community hub. Um, so your question of how does community fit into becoming an expert on building on court? The first thing I did as a loyal, technically speaking, listener is take some of the things that you asked me and broke it into parts, asked other questions to really help kind of uh, build my approach like you've talked about previously. So the first thing I asked was, well, what's an expert, right? So I myself did a little bit of Googling, uh, got a quick definition um, that I agree I with. Uh, which is a, a comprehensive and authoritative knowledge of a skill or a particular area, right? So uh, if we're accepting that as the answer or the definition of an expert, my answer to your question is how does community fit into this um, is, is really kind of three things. You kind of touched on it a little bit in your intro. Uh, I've been in community uh, for almost 15 years now. And they've been in technology communities, customers talking to each other, 
uh, experts talking to each other, customers and partners, customers and, you know, the technology provider, in our case on Cork, right? Um, and for people who participate, who attend events or are active in the online community, when I ask them what motivates them, the number one answer I've seen throughout my career is the community helps me solve the problem of I don't know what I don't know, right? So you said earlier knowledge gaps. I think that's a real key benefit of how community and participating and contributing to a community, particularly around asking and answering questions, um, helps expose the gaps in your comprehensive knowledge, right? If you want to be an expert on something, whether you're trying to be one of our community subject matter experts or just, you know, an expert at Uncork because it's part of your job, uh, knowing what those knowledge gaps are and then filling them with learning from others, right? Or learning by doing. Um, and uh, so that kind of leads to the next part, right? So knowledge gaps, I don't know what I don't know is the first one. The next one is inspiration, right? We, all of our jobs can be repetitive. You know, we have specific roles and responsibilities. So we might be working on the same types of apps, solving the same types of problems. You know, if, our customers or even a lot of our partners who serve specific types of customers, you know, you're working within a specific industry and you're solving, you know, something around insurance or financial services or whatever it may be. And you can become really good at that. And it cuts both ways, right? You can become really good the more you do something. But some of the things you might have learned in your Uncork training through a boot camp or, you know, getting certified or things like that, <clears throat> excuse me, some of those skills or those knowledge areas may atrophy. So by being involved in a community, monitoring the conversations that are happening, happening on the community, and, and with ours, there's a lot of questions being asked and answered, um, you can help find that inspiration of, oh, you know, I haven't looked at that for a while, or I haven't tried that before. So helping others and answering others' questions kind of gives you a use case outside of like the core use cases that are motivating and driving most of the work that you're doing for the problems you're solving. And it gives you a reason to explore. Um, you know, some something that I like to, to talk about sometimes is like when I participate in some other communities, you know, for the technologies that I use, it can be a little bit of what I call productive procrastination. Right. If I have some time that I want to commit to my own professional development. Right. And that's really about learning and improving my skills. I'll just go on to the community for the tools that I'm using and check out what people are asking. Right. And then like, oh, I haven't looked into that before. Well, that's outside of our use case. And really, then it's about taking some of the things that you've talked about on, on this show before. Right. Not stopping there, asking the follow up questions, unpacking the what and the why and the how. Right. And then that's where I find inspiration. Right. That might not be on our near term community roadmap, but I go, you kind of see the art of the possible. Right. And you learn about the problems others are trying to solve with that technology. And, you know, I like to think of, you know, the community hub and in the community programs that I run through a product management mindset. Right. And so what's on our roadmap, what's in our backlog of ideas. And a lot of the stuff that I find on other communities when I'm checking that out, the inspiration that I get goes into our backlog or sometimes it's a really quick improvement. Right. So, and uh, because I exposed what I didn't know, or I found inspiration, I'm able to kind of make, you know, do my job better, which is great. And that really gets to the last and the third thing is learning by doing, right? Solving problems, whether it's your own, but especially if you're helping others, gives you, uh, you know, endless opportunity to break them down in those questions into parts, to solve the problems, especially with Uncork and, and our community to get hands-on building. Because um, a lot of times to show or to help people with the answer, it's like, well, let me make a quick POC for you. And so that's one of my favorite things about our community, our Uncork community, is that a really common thing is that people, when they ask a question, will share a link to like a small POC of the configuration they're trying to solve uh, in our training environment. Um, but even more than that, people who are answering will say, hey, 
I got hands on to try to figure this out. And I built this POC so you can go check it out. Right. And so the person who's helping out answering questions, you know, was developing skills, sharpening their skills, getting hands on experience. And then the, the link that they share for the person whose question they answered and then everybody else. And this is the great part of community is you don't even need to be the person who asked the question or answered the question because it's happening out loud in this this community forum. You can go and you can click into that link or you can see the screenshots or read through and you can and think, oh, I never thought of that. You know, I'm going to go explore there. So think all three of those things, right? Knowledge gaps, inspiration, learning by doing or from others uh, doing the work uh, really, uh, I think, complement that that endless process that if you want to be an expert, um, it needs to be comprehensive knowledge. Right. So you, you, it, that's a journey that doesn't quite end. And you and I both used an acronym, SME. What what does SME stand for and what is our SME program? Yeah, you know, and it's used in a lot of different ways internally at Uncork, and I'm sure there are others who use this um, within their company. But generally, when you hear SME, it stands for what we're using it for, which means subject matter expert. And um, so we have a specific Uncork community subject matter expert program or SME program. And primarily what an SME is in our community is that that program, that recognition is, is a way to, to reward and recognize our top community contributors. Um, so it's uh, a status in, on our community. It's a badge that you get. It's a rank that shows next to your, your questions, your replies and your answers and some other things. So Really, it's about saying thank you to those who are driving our success the most, but it's also an incentive. It's a goal that others can aspire to, right? When you know, hey, becoming an SME in the Encore community is possible, that might motivate you too, especially when you learn about the details of the program and the different rewards that come with it. Or it might just be a professional development goal you set for yourself. You know, we're still near the beginning of the year. A lot of people are finalizing goals and things like that. And, uh, you know, if you have some professional development goals or, or you want to kind of for yourself or, or with your company, um, this it's a nice kind of destination um, for people to to work towards. But the the other thing, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that in SME or the SME program uh, is for is it's about trust in context. Right. So there are a few. Well, if I ask a question on the community, right, as somebody who doesn't have nearly as the hands-on experience uh, working with Uncork that you do, and you answer my question, it's nice to say like, hey, this is somebody who has answered dozens and dozens of questions on the community who has a lot of experience. So that context and the trust that comes with it when we kind of give somebody SME status is very helpful for the people who are reading through that question thread and seeing who the answer come from. It doesn't mean that people who are new to Uncork or answering questions, uh, that, that their expertise isn't helpful, but a lot of times you want to know who is this coming from, you know, how much can I trust their experience? So it's one way that we recognize on our community is this is somebody who's contributed a lot and they're contribute based on the criteria of the program. Um, they've demonstrated expertise by being the person who solved a problem or answered a question uh, quite frequently or contributed through the, the many other ways, presenting on events and uh, things like that. And, you know, I just want to bring it back to, to wrap up that question is, uh, about what is, you know, an SME, what's our SME program is first and foremost, it's about recognizing and rewarding those who are contributing so much, as I mentioned. So it was part of the benefits you, you know, we recognize them in our, on the community hub and, and within our Encore community, but also try to come up with ways to to thank, say thank you, show our gratitude with like a credential on LinkedIn. Um, and it's our go to group, our super users within our community for feedback about the community, the people I work with for beta testing new features. And when we're telling the stories of successful creators on within our Encore community, they're often the first group of people we go to because they're they're experts. They're doing cool things. They're solving cool problems. Um, and my favorite part of all of this is that when we talk to SMEs, uh, I'm hearing a lot that becoming an Uncork SME 
through work, contributing to our community has been beneficial for their careers. Because the process of becoming an SME is doing that learning, that improving your skills and going hand in hand with that, the recognition that, that you get when you become an official SME has proven to be beneficial for um, many of our creators' careers in terms of uh, advancement within their own company or being appealing candidates and, and getting hired someplace else as our customers and partners look to um, you know, hire some of the best uh, Uncork uh, creators and configurators out there, right? So uh, in addition to certifications, it's another way to say like, hey, I have a lot of experience or I've demonstrated that I'm good at this. And that's, re that's really rewarding for me to hear that it's uh, benefiting those. And those things come hand in hand, right? Improving your skills, really be developing that expertise and, you know, career success, job success. And how do you see this program fitting into our broader learning community? We've got academy, we've got docs, we've got boot camp, we've got community. How do they all come together? Yeah, so from a community perspective, another aspect of having an SME program is, you know, there's a little bit of a supply and demand problem, right? Communities are great, especially if you have Q&A forums like we do, which is, you know, the most active part of our community. And everybody at the beginning of their learning journey has a lot of questions. But if they're, if they listen to you, they don't stop asking questions, even as they develop expertise, right? And you need a supply of experts to meet the demand of people with questions. So it, this really collective learning helps with that. And you need people you can learn from, people you can collaborate with. So the great thing about our SME pr program is that these are all creators who have kind of demonstrated that they have a growth or learning mindset for themselves, right? They have a true goal of becoming an expert. Now, when they reach SME status, they stay engaged and active. They're still answering questions. They're still posting their own questions and kind of working out loud, solving problems like that great example you solved of like going over and talking to your colleague, right? <laughs> that act really does help you learn things in terms of, uh, you know, teaching others or talking through something with somebody else or exploring that. And it's a great complement to what we have in terms of the robust documentation that we have, the great training that we have self-service through the academy, whether, you know, that's going through a course or some of the live training options that we have. A lot of that is going to require you, though, getting hands on yourself and exploring with a you know, a development platform like Uncork, there's so much you can do, right? So even really great guided, you know, training is going to lead to questions that you have. So the community is a nice self-service way to access all of the questions that have been asked and answered before, as well as we have a really great active community where most people get a, you know, we're near a hundred percent, um, reply rate. So if you ask a question, you're going to get a helpful reply. We're uh, at like 75% solution rate um, over the last quarter, which is really great. Um, and, uh, um, and so when you're working on your own and you go ask the question, you're going to get help very likely and usually within a couple hours. Um, and but the other thing is, is what I said of like that self-service kind of knowledge base of all the questions that have been asked and answered before. So it really kind of fills those knowledge gaps, right? We're working on more training, keeping our training up to date, better training. The documentation team does great work every time we launch new things. But, you know, there's with so much that's possible with Uncork, it's always going to take a lot of time to like, document everything, train on everything, right? Or, and we don't know your use case, right? Or that specific thing, that client requirement. So building up all of that kind of helps fill in the gaps there between some of the other resources that we have available. And I got a sneak preview of this already being an SME, but th it sounds like there's some tweaks or changes to the SME program coming. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, we uh, announced it in kind of effective um, the 1st of February, kind of going forward. Um, and there's information up on the Community Hub if anybody wants to really look at the details of what's changing or what the program looks like. It's not changing too dramatically. Um, really, we're making a few tweaks to how you earn and maintain SME status 
And then um, because it's about recognizing and rewarding those top contributors as well and keeping those experts engaged, uh, we're adding some new benefits, particularly for people like you, Dara, who have been an SME for, for many years, um, you know, getting, you know, some swag and, a, you know, recognition up front. But what keeps you motivated and things like that, aside from the learning journey, right? That's the key part is SMEs, like I said, are proven to, um, you know, have that learning mindset. But we also want to express our gratitude and, and, and give them benefits. So the criteria for becoming an SME previously and, and, and going forward is based mostly around two things. Demonstrating your expertise through providing a high volume of answers and earning points on the community uh, over several months. So you have to be actively contributing on the community. And our approach to, to gamification to points is you earn points for just about everything that you do. So you earn a lot of points from like presenting on one of our events. You earn a lot of points when your reply is the answer. You earn points for giving us feedback and sharing product improvement ideas and things like that. But you also earn points for posting a question, right? Um, because what we've talked about and what you've talked about on the show that, you know, working out loud, sharing your questions with others so that they can access it later. But mostly you're going to earn points when you're helping others by answering their questions. So you're, you're replying to help unpack their question, to clarify it a little bit. Did you try this? Have you done this? Or actually here, I know how to do that. Here's a screenshot. Here's a POC to go check out and things like that. And so it's not something in summary that you can earn quickly. You have to earn uh, 200 or more points in three months over um, a, a given time frame, and you have to provide, um, as I mentioned, a large amount of answers. So what we've changed is going back to what I mentioned earlier around trust when you see that your reply or your question is answered by an SME is looking at a couple things. One, there's other ways to validate improve expertise and our enablement team and through Uncork Academy and our certifications does it a, a great way of doing that. So it's rewarding and incentivizing the, the hard work that goes into um, into certifications by aligning some of our criteria to our different certification levels. And how we align that is by also recognizing that experts attention and time is in high demand the more expertise you have you know the more responsibilities you might be getting at work or the questions that people you're asked by your colleagues and things like that so recognizing that the more expertise you have in uncork you might not be able to consistently be active on the community every day every month as much as i would like you to so uh the more you kind of move up the certification level like for example if you're a professional configurator um you have a little bit more flexibility on the the earning 200 points over you know six months as opposed to for a couple um, months uh, things like that and you you don't have to answer quite as many questions your your certification helps validate your expertise there but still it's about rewarding and recognizing our top contributors so it still takes a lot of work it's not a box you can easily check and the other part of this is when we have key uncork best practices like our Uncork Agile framework that, you know, you and our delivery teams leverage, Dara. We want to make sure that any, anybody we're calling an expert in our community is trained on that. So we've added that to the criteria. We have a great course from Uncork Academy. We did a webinar with one of our colleagues um, last spring. And um, uh, there's some really great assets to help teams and projects run uh, more effectively. So, so the other criteria that's been added is... Um, uh, that's a new criteria we, we ask everyone to do. And then um, and just to bring it back, you know, adding more rewards, as I mentioned, to say thank you, to express our gratitude when people, are, you know, not only earn SME status, but then stay active over the, the next 12 months of their SME turn, term. Amazing. Amazing. I'm very excited, as always, for new things coming in in SME. So I know this is a little longer episode than we typically have so far, Dara. So I, to, to wrap up, I have, you know, one, you know, question for you is um, tied to where you started this, right? Is how have you seen answering questions 
improve your skills or, or those on your team, right? Because one of the one of the things I get asked the most is, <clears throat> well, why should I answer other people's questions, right? I want the community to be there for me when I have a question, but why should I help out aside from everything we've talked about? But having some really specific examples from you as one of our SMEs, our number two all-time points earner on the community uh, who's answered so many questions, but also as somebody who works with others who have you know, helped and answered questions and contributed to the community, how have you seen that translate into your skills or their skills um, in configuring on Encore? I think one of the best benefits for me has been sometimes because I only have 15 minutes or 20 minutes between meetings where I have a moment and I want to kind of play in the platform. I don't have a ticket assigned. I don't have a task to do, but I want to continue to build something. Um, it can be overwhelming to just have a blank page in 20 minutes and be told, go. Um, so having a question that somebody asked to develop a POC is really, really something that helps me. It helps me get familiar with new components. It helps me think about a new use case. There are many times where I haven't thought about how those two components might interact, or maybe I know how to display an image in a freeform grid, but not a uniform grid. So making sure that I have kind of a, a problem statement to solve helps mm -hmm. me stay focused and not just, you know, go from working in on Cork to checking my email to answering a Slack and, and really not get that time in the platform that I need to do my job. Um, the second thing is it will point out areas I have gaps in knowledge. Maybe I haven't looked at the new documentation on dynamic refresh very well. So when somebody's asking a question, forcing me to go back and read that documentation, even if it is with the lens of their question, means that when somebody else asks me a question or I'm working with somebody on my team, I know, oh, that was in that documentation. Let me just run back and, and confirm that. Um, I think thirdly, and I mentioned this, I am competitive. I don't like sitting in second place. So things that, you know, points are in gamification for me is absolutely something that uh, motivates me to answer questions. May not motivate everyone, but it's a huge part of that. And I think thirdly, um, and selfishly, there was a period of time where people would just come to me and say, I have this problem, how do you solve it? Being able to put that answer out once rather than having 200 yeah. different people slack me or email me or want to sit down for half an hour to solve a problem is really allows me to focus on other things that bring my team to the next level uh, yeah. because I'm they can go and find it themselves. I'm glad you said that last thing. I remember my, you know, the first time we met and I asked you about your experiences in SME that you specifically said that, right? And that goes back to like experts' time and attention is in demand, right? And yeah. as you've developed expertise, you've advanced at Uncork and, but, you know, people know, hey, Darren knows how to do this or Darren's the person, person I should go ask. And that can lead to a lot of slack, like, or email questions or, or things that interrupt your work, but you have, you know, a lot of responsibilities. And so you're right, you know, the building a knowledge base is collectively, we all get to help each other. And um, uh, that's really great. And then on the, the gamification piece, you know, I used to think I was immune to gamification, right? And that was actually a challenge. <laughs> no one's me. immune. <laughs> yeah. As a, as a community manager, I was like, I don't know, like, is this really going to motivate people? But the, you know what? by just working out loud, sharing ideas for like the vendor for our community platform, asking questions at my last job when we were implementing and things like that. All of a sudden I started moving up the leaderboard and then I was like, oh, I'm like in sixth place all time now. And now I'm in second place on that community and within like a hundred points. And I'm like, I want to get to the top. And, and that was a gateway to me also looking for other professional development opportunities to share my expertise. Like now I've done a webinar with them and I've shared some of the cool, innovative thing that we're doing with our community platform and using Uncork to extend and improve the experience and things like our federated search and things like that. And 
you know, points and recognition and kind of that challenge was the first step. And now it's really led to a, a professional development journey. Um, yeah. and and I think it just comes down to everyone wants to be recognized in some way, whether yeah. it's personal recognition, leaderboard recognition, you know, somebody just saying like, thank you for doing what you do. Everyone wants to be recognized in some way. And I think community is a great way, especially if you're trying to prove your skills to get that recognition from the Uncork community at large. Yeah. Um, and answering questions is probably your fastest way there. Yeah, I, I'm glad you said that. And that's the the thesis of our approach to gamification. And I mentioned earlier, you earn points for everything you do on the community hub, asking your question. But even you get like a point for giving an upvote to somebody, right? Yeah. Because when you reply, Dara, and like six people give an upvote to that, you know, I want to reward them in addition to you for getting the upvotes because, hey, Dara wants to know that she helped, right? That this is helpful, like, and things like that. And so we have, you know, or we have different point totals for different types of impact, but that's also helpful data for us when people say, what are the top questions on data workflow or like things like that? That's all information we can use to create better resources and to pr improve our community, but also it's just about people helping people. Like we want to be recognized. We want to be, be seen and, and know that, you know, our contributions mattered. Uh, so even just like a simple upvote is, is a great way to do that. Um, but best way is, is helping others out by answering questions, like you said. So on, the last thing I'd like to say is just to your point about everyone wanting to be recognized, I want to just take an opportunity to say thank you to everyone and express my gratitude to everyone who contributes to our community. We can't do this without you, it's especially our SMEs, but everybody who's working towards being an SME. Um, and as we've talked about, there's real benefit for our SMEs and for others to answer your questions. So even if you're going on the community and just asking your questions, thank you for doing that because it contributes to building our knowledge base. And it gives people like Dara, you know, that it takes away that white page, uh, like you said, and gives you a problem to solve in a way that helps you learn. So thanks everyone. Absolutely. Thank you to everyone who's online with us right now. Thank you to all those question askers. We know that I always encourage that. And thank you for tuning in with us today. Thank you, Danny, for being here. All right. We will see Thanks you next me. week.